Well, we're here at Kensington Palace where they will be opening their doors to a new exhibition called Diana, Her Fashion Story, which of course celebrates her life through her evolving fashion style because this year marks 20 years since Princess Diana was killed in that Paris tunnel. Now, there are 25 of her most iconic dresses and outfits on display here. We're lucky enough to be talking to one of the curators, Elari Lin. Thank you very much for having us today. Pleasure. So talk to us a little bit about the exhibition and the idea behind the exhibition. Well, as you said, 2017 marks 20 years since uh, the death of Princess Diana. Um, and people still come to Kensington Palace because it was her former home. So we wanted to celebrate her life and style um, with 25 of her most iconic gowns. And fashion um, is such a good medium to talk about the princess because although she didn't like to be known as a clothes horse, she intuitively understood the language of clothes and really um, used it to help her do the job at hand as a princess, humanitarian and patron of the arts. I was just going to say that she knew, she knew what worked for her and she she used that to attract attention, especially when she was out going to charities. She wanted to, to draw people in to the causes that she really believed in. I think she used fashion to do that. Well, absolutely. Um, she was a passionate uh, patroness, um, an ambassador for British fashion and the British fashion industry across the world. Um, and she was also representing Britain, so her clothing um, did represent the best of uh, British uh, fashion, uh, uh, but also um, diplomatic messages when she went on international travels. Um, however, she also, in addition to looking regal and like a princess, um, she also used fashion to dress down. So when she was visiting children's hospitals, for example, she would wear um, bright, cheerful colours so that the children would find her approachable. Mm -hmm. um, she very rarely wore gloves because she liked to hold hands. And she stopped wearing hats after a while because she said you can't cuddle a child in a hat. So um, there are many different ways that she used fashion to do her job, but she was very good at knowing how to do that. Let's talk about um, her fashion style and compare it to other people in the other members of the royal family. I mean, she dressed completely different, differently to other members of the royal family. She was more daring. Um, the, I think that's true. I think that uh, she had a sense of um, experimentation and fun with her fashion. Um, what you see um, in her style is, um, is that often she had a bit of a playful sense, so she often wore tuxedo styles. Um, there's a very famous flamenco dress where she wore a, a red evening glove and a black evening glove, um, which is quite bold. Mismatched. Absolutely. <laughs> and she liked to wear costume jewellery, uh, which at the time was quite, uh, was quite innovative because she was teaming um, high street with couture. Um, and uh, a lot of the designers recall a sense of fun when she was trying on clothes and a sort of playful glint in her eye as she was trying on clothes and sort of saying, they're going to love this. And what's interesting, I think, about this exhibition is that you can see how her style evolved. You have one of the blouses that she wore uh, for her engagement portrait that was taken by Lord Snowden, where she was very sort of innocent uh, and young. It really reflected her age. I mean, she was very young when she was engaged. Then, you know, fast forward to these showstoppers, right? Well, I, I mean, we, the, in the exhibition, we chart uh, 16 years of her time in the public eye. It would be surprising if her style didn't evolve um, from her teenage to um, her 30s. Um, and, but what we see is her very quickly gaining a sense of confidence in her sense of style. And so in the early 80s, you see she's wearing a lot of that sort of new romantic style that was very fashionable, lots of frills, lots of ruffles, and she really liked that. But I think she learned quite quickly that that didn't necessarily play very well um, for press photographs. And she learned to really simplify her look, uh, to make the embellishments surface embellishments and sort of um, give herself a streamlined silhouette. In a way, she rose above those seasonal changes in fashion to have a more timeless elegance um, and stuck with what she knew suited her um, even, even if fashion shifted around her. And I think it's that timeless elegance that has given her that fashion icon status that we remember. Oh, absolutely. And I think a lot of people were looking at her as this like fashion icon, international fashion icon. And what was, I think what was interesting to see is, is as you were saying, the, the, her, the way her fashion evolved and how towards the end of her life, she was wearing more, more sort of, I think she was comfortable in who she was. She knew who she was and I think she was comfortable in the way, you know, um, some of her dresses were quite form-fitting. 
Well, they were, and if that also reflects um, the 90s fashion <laughs> for the bodycon style. But she um, wore a series of what Catherine Walker, who was one of her most um, sort of uh, loyal and enduring yeah. designers, called dignified showstoppers. So she knew how to wear um, fantastically dignified, but really um, kind of uh, knockout numbers. So let's go, if you don't mind, just talking to us about a few of the dresses here. I know that the green one, the velvet one, has a little secret. Um, Maybe has a little secret. Not <laughs> this one. Oh, it's There's not this one. green velvet. <laughs> okay, so not this one. No. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll talk yeah, about the sure. other green one, but if you could just tell us about the dresses that are in yeah, this room. Yeah, of course. So um, we're actually standing in what is the final room of the exhibition. Um, and this room uh, really um, addresses that auction that was held in, at Christie's in New York in 1997. Um, and inspired by an idea of Prince William's, um, uh, the princess decided to sell 79 of her most famous gowns wow. for charity, raising over 3.4 million pounds for AIDS and cancer charities. But the press widely reported this as a symbolic act that she was closing a chapter on her royal life and style um, and perhaps embarking upon a new chapter. Of course, the poignant thing is that we wouldn't know what that next chapter was to be. But in this room, we really celebrate that... Um, the, 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 the Diana who was very confident in her own sense of style um, and surrounding us on the walls are images from a Mario Testino photo shoot for Vanity Fair that was taken in order to publicise the auction mm. um, and what we see in these images is um, a very informal, relaxed Diana. Mario Testino uh, wanted to photograph her as if she'd just come in from a party. Mm -hmm. So there are no accessories. She looks as though she's just run her fingers through her hair. And I think this is the enduring uh, image of Diana that yeah, we have. Yeah, and she looks comfortable, she looks happy. Um, what, what else can you tell us about the dresses in here before? we moved to another room. Well, in addition to a number of the dresses that were sold at auction, we also have um, a dress by Gianni Versace mm. that she wore in 1991. And as Princess of Wales, she had been a proud ambassadress for British fashion and worn almost exclusively British uh, designers. In the 90s, she did start to experiment more with international designers and Versace was a real favorite. This dress um, is quite iconic. Um, uh, from a photo shoot with Patrick de Marchelier. So it's the one at the, uh, the other side of the case. Okay. Um, but it's got a, a pattern of beading to it, which is very much like... Can we walk? Um, Can we walk to it? Mm. Which it it's got a... Uh, it has a pattern of beading on it, which is very... This one? Yes, okay. very sort of Liz Taylor and Cleopatra. It's yeah. so quite a powerful dress. Yeah. I mean, if you want to dazzle, this will be your dress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's interesting, I think, is that it does, it was very fashionable in the 90s. Mm. Um, and, and most of Diana's styles were, were sort of fashionable in, at the time. Mm. But they are timeless. You could wear many of these dresses today mm. and on the red carpet and still be within, you know, in the best dress. It's true. You could wear this to the Oscars this, this weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. And then um, this uh, shift dress that is next to it. This is the dress that she wore to the gala preview of that auction in Christie's in 1997. The design is very simple. I mean, the embellishment is, the surface embellishment is beautiful, but the cut is very simple. Yeah. I think to draw attention to the dresses that were being sold mm. and perhaps make, um, mark the difference between them. And I read somewhere that, you know, w w when people came to see this exhibition, I think the journalists were writing about how, what strikes you is how small she was. You know, she was, she was quite tall. She was tall. Yeah, but her figure was quite small. I think that's what people were talking about. Well, the designers yeah. um, recall that she was an absolute dream to design for because she was beautiful and had this model stature. But not only that, whenever she wore something, um, of course, it just put their designs on an international stage and their designs, were, designs went stellar. Um, a number of the pieces here were copied on the high street and sold out. Um, and so her contribution to the British fashion industry probably can't be overstated. Mm. Is there anything else in this room that you would like to, any dresses that you would like to talk to us about? I know we've highlighted three of them. Um, anything else that jumps out at you? Well, the black bugle bead dress yeah. is beautiful with the halter neck. Yeah. She wore that. Um, we'll yeah. yeah, sure. This one here? Yes. Oh, and this is the picture for it. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. 
So um, the princess wore this dress to um, a UNESCO event mm -hmm. at Versailles in 1994. Um, and she, this was from Catherine Walker's own collection. So most of the dresses here were made um, bespoke for the princess. Mm -hmm. But this was just picked off a rail. Um, and I think that shows that the, the, um, how her confidence in her own sense of style had really grown so that um, she, she knew what she wanted, she went straight for it. Um, and when she wore this in Paris, the legendary couturier Pierre Cardin said, we're at the home of the Sun King of France and here we now have the Sun Princess of Versailles. And so to, re to, to wow. sort of get those plaudits in France, the home of haute couture, is quite something. Yeah, and I also read that she, she knew exactly what she wanted. She used to work quite closely with the designers. So again, pointing to, to her being comfortable in her own skin and knowing her fashion style and her fashion sense. Absolutely. Um, I think she knew what she liked right from the start. So uh, when she um, got engaged to the Prince of Wales, um, she started recruiting designers around her who would help her create a working wardrobe. Um, and many of them became quite loyal friends because they were quite disarmed by her informality. Um, but many of them said, although they tried to steer her in particular directions, she wouldn't wear something if she didn't like it. Mm. So right from the start, she had a strong sense of what she liked. Yeah, and who she was. Do you have a favourite? It changes every day. <laughs> I'm sure. There are so many to pick from. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I know you don't thank have you. that much time, but thank you so much for giving us a little walk and talk of, of the exhibition here. Elaria Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you.